Well, we are in Tucson, Arizona, just landed and are on our way to the uh, to the Radio Shack uh, riding camp. I just, it makes me laugh every time I say that because, you know, what am I doing here? The reason we're here is because I have what must be the very most generous uh, readers in the whole world. Last Thursday, so uh, nine days ago, I suppose, um, I woke up in the morning to write my normal blog post for FatCyclist.com and I honestly had no idea what I ought to write that morning. And just uh, sitting down thinking for a while, I thought, well, what if the way you became a professional cyclist was instead of uh, riding your bike really fast, you applied for it like you would to be a product manager at a, at a technology company, which is what I do for my day job. And uh, so I, I wrote a cover letter, uh, just an ordinary cover letter that might go to a resume, but I wrote it to Johan Brunil, uh, saying things like, you know, I, I'm a team player and I know PowerPoint and I'm willing to travel as long as it's not on weekends and just, you know, jokey, silly stuff that doesn't make any sense at all in the context of being a pro cyclist. The name Fat Cyclist rang a bell. Uh, I said, I, have, I know that name, I have heard it or seen it somewhere. And I, could, I remember there was some kind of connection with Lance. Johan saw the post that I had written and he uh, wrote something back saying, okay, uh, big shot. <laughs> well, if, you want to, uh, if you want to ride with Team Radio Shack, you gotta prove that uh, you can ride with Team Radio Shack. He, he did a sort of a two-tiered challenge. The first one would be if I could raise $10,000 each for uh, Livestrong and for World Bicycle Relief, then I could come to Arizona and ride for a day with Team Radio Shack. And if I could ride, if I, I could raise 50000 then I would get to, uh, I would get a Madone 6 Series, which is just, you know, incredible to even consider. I just thought it was, it was a great opportunity to turn this joke around into something serious which you know which could be a very good story which would have a lot of people follow the story and ultimately give Eldon the opportunity to finally make it to camp and to you know give him the chance to be on the team so i uh i make a phone call uh to travis Ott, the brand manager at gary fisher he says here's what we're going to do we're going to give you a jersey signed by Lance Armstrong, and I'm thinking, oh, well, that's nice. Um, you know, I, a little bit disappointed because I'm thinking that, you know, for to raise fifty thousand dollars, I needed something a little bit more. And then he says, and we're going to give you a 2010 Superfly painted custom with Fat Cyclist colors and logo. And you know, my jaw just dropped. I couldn't even say anything. Got on the phone with. Uh, one of uh, Johan's uh, colleagues, uh, his assistant, and said, we're going to give away this bike, and also the Madone, I don't really feel great about taking myself because you know, I'm going to be asking people to give their money away, and then for me to get something back for, uh, for their efforts. It just felt a little bit, you know, it felt a little bit awkward. Uh, so what if we gave away that bike? And he said, if you want to give that bike away, I'll, just, I'll do what I can to get Team Radio Shack to sign it. And so suddenly I've got the most incredible contest there's ever been, I, you know, as far as I'm concerned. I've got two great charities. I've got two one-of-a-kind bikes. And I post a contest Sunday, uh, Sunday around noon. And by Monday at noon, uh, well, I, was, I should say by Sunday in the evening, we've hit that 20,000 mark, no problem. By Monday at lunchtime, we've hit the 50,000 mark. So the question is now, what do we do next? This is what we were supposed to get to by, the, uh, by Friday afternoon, and we've still got four full days. Um, and so uh, Johan came up with the next, uh, the next level, which was, raise a hundred thousand dollars so twice what our original goal was and uh, Trek Travel would throw in a trip to see the finish of the Tour de France 
uh, you know, everything included. And so I posted that up on my blog, and by the end of Tuesday, we've hit that as well. We raised, I believe, uh, around $125,000 by now. I don't know the exact sum, but a lot more than I would have imagined even possible. I, I like these kind of things, you know, it's, it starts small and it turned into something really, really interesting, which, you know, which, which had the whole team involved. And, and ultimately, you know, the final result, what Eldon has done uh, to get here. But, you know, let's not forget that the, the, the benefit is for two uh, big charities. I've always thought of Johan, first of all, as a really inspirational character. But up until, up until this event, I've never thought of him as heroic, and now I really do. I think, you know, th this guy from now on is my hero. He is, besides what he's capable of uh, inspiring people to do on the bike, he is a man of humor and grace, and he put, he took uh, a joke and turned it into something really amazing and good. So, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's something a visionary man does, and I, you know, got to love him for that. Uh, Lance Armstrong has been my hero for uh, ever since, um, I contacted uh, Livestrong with questions about my uh, my late wife's own cancer. So, you know, just uh, meeting some of these people is going to be just amazing. Um, meeting Levi Leipheimer, meeting Chris Horner and finding out which of the two of us can eat more junk food in a sitting. Um, <laughs> I'm looking forward, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting so many of these people. Andres, Cloden, I mean, holy, holy smokes. <laughs> I, I'm meeting all of my Tour de France heroes in, in, uh, in just a few short minutes. I'm, uh, I'm, so yeah, I'm a bundle of nerves. As far as the, as far as the weekend, you know, sitting down and eating with these guys, I'm looking forward to that. Seeing how, how much more I eat than these guys, <laughs> well, that'll be fun. All right. So, as we were getting ready to check in, uh, out walks Johan and. He is just the nicest guy in, in real life. Um, no different really than uh, when you see video of him. He's just easy to talk to and just really terrific. Uh, Johan let me know as soon as I arrived here. He says, oh, we have, a, we have a trek for you to ride. Did you bring a bike? I did. did you, so you, you ride your own bike tomorrow? I guess so, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, so because we have, uh, we have this bike, you, everybody signed the bike, you know? Oh yeah, someone else gets that, yeah, I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to see it. But we it? have another bike for you too, like another team bike, which you, which you can take away. Are you serious? Yeah. That is not a small, <laughs> he, he said it as, a, as an aside, oh, we have a trek for you to, for you to keep. And you know, did a huge double take because generally people don't give me bikes as, as an oh, by the way, kind of thing. So that was pretty awesome. Uh, a few minutes ago, just got back from dinner and uh, it was great just asking, asking questions about uh, how, how he trains people, how he, um, how he stays in contact with everyone uh, while they're working in, the, you know, riding in their individual home areas. Lance walked up, said, hey, fatty, which was cool, and uh, then later got a chance to talk with uh, Levi and uh, Levi Leipheimer and Chris Horner. And, uh, talked to Levi about some of the uh, area that he's that he used to ride back when he lived in Utah that is now my uh, uh, you know, my hometown riding grounds. So that was very cool. Tomorrow morning uh, we suit up and uh, I find out the what it's like to go riding with the pros up Mount Lemon, which uh, apparently is a not especially steep, but that's I mean that's and not especially steep for the pros, I don't know. It might be incredibly steep for me, uh, but uh, a good long climb and uh, see how that goes.